Hi, my name is Leo from Endeavor Solutions, and today I'll take you through MIB Advanced uh, Replenishment and MRP. As I explained before, there's two ways for us to do some sort of material replenishment inside of MIB Advanced. So when people need to procure uh, the goods, whether it's in a raw material or finished product format, um, sometimes the, the, the users require the ability for the system to tell them as a recommendation what should be made, what should be bought. And if you've got sub-assemblies, if you have to make product A, you might have to also assemble product B before it can go into product A. So the solution provides us with two different ways to do that. The first one would be uh, the ability to do what we call standard replenishment. Now, replenishment is part of the enterprise product, whereas the material requirements planning, the MRP as we talk about it, that forms part of our manufacturing uh, edition. So both solutions are available and I'll quickly take you through, through both of them. So for starters, there's a couple of things we have to set up for each and every uh, stock item before this can, uh, can be used. The first thing um, that I'll quickly show you here, just moving into one of these finished good products, master files, is there's a couple of basic information. So under the warehouses, you can see that there's multiple warehouses uh, allocated to this product and already different stock on hand. One of the first things you'll notice here is the preferred supplier. Preferred supplier, you could pr potentially purchase this product from different preferred suppliers for different locations, hence why that is there. So you'll first need to allocate a preferred supplier. You also need to specify whether seasonality is involved, and um, I can take you through seasonality in another video, where we can apply some sort of factors to certain parts of the year. And then also whether the purchase uh, replenishment is purchase or procure, or purchase or make. Uh, so there's a couple of different options there. So in this case, it's all just purchased um, in and uh, quantity on hand. The next thing is under the supplier here, my preferred supplier. We need to specify per supplier how long it will take from when we create a PO to them to when we would typically land the goods. Um, you've also got the ability to add a bit of factor, a bit of fat in there. Uh, especially in the, in the current climate where the supply chain is so heavily backed up. Um, you could put in things like minimum order days, uh, economic order quantities, things that make sense for that specific product. Maybe you've got special pricing from suppliers and certain uh, you know, uh, volume breaks or whatever. You've also got min and max, uh, and that's one of the other options when we do replenishment is you can actually do min max, which I'll show you in just a second. So once those things have been set up, the next thing here would be the actual replenishment parameters. You typically would only set up one. I've set up both just in this case to talk about the different options. As you can see here, we could set up a standard fixed reorder quantity or a min-max. Um, and like I explained earlier, there's seasonality that you could apply as well. Things like maximum shelf time, safety stock, reorder points, etc. Once all of that information is in there, the system will then, when we run a replenishment, look at purchase orders, sales orders, forecast all the demand and then tell you what it is that you need to purchase at a certain point. So in order to do that, we just literally go and run uh, what we call a prepare replenishment. This is a very quick process where you need to specify certain parameters and a certain things like a certain warehouse. You might want to do this for a specific supplier at a time. Um, so as an example, if I've only put in that one in the example from before, you would only see the products that are relevant to that specific supplier. So uh, you could do this like that so that when you raise POs, it only do one supplier at a time potentially. In this example, I've got all of them open now um, and you'll see that the system now refreshes and gives me a bit of a list of all the different things that's going on. So if we take this example, the other thing I can do whilst I'm on the screen is the user can quickly navigate to what we call view supply inventory. And um, what this does is quickly show me everything else I buy from them and typical uh, data that we've already set up in that other tab will now be here summarized for every single product. So it's a quick way to quickly have a look at things like last purchase prices and things like that. So you'll see here that I've got a quantity to process, planned, that potentially is planned purchase orders, um, things like uh, open purchase orders like that. So it's not yet landed, so it's coming in. Quantity that we've got on hand obviously is in those two different warehouses which I showed you earlier. Uh, demand would be sales orders, um, quotes, things like that. So um, this would then 
specify whether you need to take action. Now, it takes a trained human eye sometimes to review recommended lists like this to then kind of say, okay, what it is that I should be purchasing or not. So um, once you've reviewed the information, as an example, I might want to just overwrite this value anyway and raise a PO for that. So if I create one in that specific line, you'll see that the tick box goes on here. So I could tick all of them at the same time and run a quick process. In this case, I've only got one selected. So I will just create one purchase order. So that is just the process around the standard replenishment. Um, it typically caters for most scenarios. Where we require um, the MRP, this is more to do with bill of materials and you need to explode the bomb as they talk or uh, literally um, ha unpack the bill of material where you've got multiple levels of bill of material and, and ultimately get to the raw material. So we also have forecasts built into our MRP run. So if I navigate here to our material requirements planning screen, you'll see that I've got a couple of options here. So we can first and foremost generate some forecasts. So a forecast can be generated based on sales history um, and you can apply all kinds of different factors of growth to this. You could have seasonality once again built into this and this could generate your forecast for you, which you can then utilize in running the MRP. Now sales orders can, if you want, to also consume a forecast. And there's all kinds of parameters behind it that we could set up which allows you to validate how many days before and after a specific forecast was in the forecast for where a sales order is allowed to consume that quantity so that you don't have to double up and raise, let's say, a purchase order for forecast as well as for the sales orders. Anyway, that's something we can cover in another video. Um, in this specific example, I've just set up also a manual forecast here. So you can see there I've got one bicycle. Now, in this case, I've done weekly intervals here. You could set up various different intervals, whatever makes sense. Could just be a one-time forecast, could be monthly. You might have contractual agreements with customers. You might want to load that in. You could also have begin and end dates. This dependent tab is very specific to needing the forecast and sales order, sales order to consume the forecast, which is hence why that's there. So you can also import and export this template to Excel and import that from Excel. So if you have contractual agreements on some other external source and you want to just suck it in as part of the forecasting and ordering the right things, then that's typically what you would do there. So once you've put in all that kind of information and the similar information we discussed earlier, you would typically uh, regenerate an MRP run. So to regenerate is as simple as running this process. The system will literally tell you when last this was run. And every time you process this and you can see here, we could also schedule this. If you schedule an MRP run, you could maybe have this happen, you know, 12 o'clock every night so that at seven in the morning, all the data that is displayed is already active based on current information. So I'm just running this now. You'll see in the top right hand corner here, it's busy executing and you'll kind of see a bit of a log of everything that's happening and everything that's being processed through the MRP run. So the MRP run is a little bit more sophisticated. It looks at various different things as I explained. Um, and it also really caters for, for the manufacturing side where you've got multiple production orders potentially. Once that's run, um, you could then go in and have a look at the display. There's things like MRP exceptions, which I'm not gonna cover in this video, um, but worth noting that you can Put certain things in for exception. Now in this case we get a recommended list again, right? And what I didn't cover necessarily in the previous screen is that you also have the ability to not just purchase a manufacturer, but you can transfer stock from one location to another. So should you just run out of one warehouse or you don't have minimum levels in one warehouse but you've got too much in the other one, then you could just generate a transfer. Same thing applies here. So you'll see there's three different actions we can take. You can purchase, manufacture and transfer. So uh, it's worth noting that also when you look at the list in the MRP display screen, you've got various different types of reasoning as to why these items have come up onto the screen. Some of this you could see has come from a sales order. Um, and if I just navigate to another screen here, you'll see that you'll probably have certain things come from an MRP requirement and safety stock and things like that. So there's multiple reasons why things might come up. You might have the same product even come up a few different times as well. So I'm going to quickly just do this as a descending order. And you'll see here I've got one of these items in this case uh, come up twice. Once for 
recovering whatever we require for that sales order. And in this case, to also beef up the safety stock. So in this specific example, the safety stock was never purchased before. And now it wants us to fulfill a sales order, but it also at the same time wants us to purchase another 200 to re to, to um, make sure we've got our safety stock, which is just a, a like a min-max number. Now, um, that's one example. There's various other examples that we could work through with you. So um, hopefully this explains, you know, how the system works, what it does, what you can have a look at. These, this screen can obviously also be filtered out. And then if you were to uh, purchase the same product, you could select both in that case and once again generate a purchase order. So you can, in this case, what's really nice about the MRP run here is if you had to buy certain things but for different dates or planned dates, you could either create multiple POs or a PO with multiple lines and dis display which quantity you need at what date. So that maybe some things are for a production order at an earlier date than for something else. And that way you can manage some cash flow as well and not overcapitalize on purchasing too much of, of, the, of the raw material um, beforehand. So that pretty much uh, concludes this quick demonstration.